I've always been someone who takes stuff apart to see how it works. I love the build. I'm not one to build something out of Legos and then put it on a shelf. This is the Tesla Honda. It's half Tesla and half Honda. It's an electric car that I built to figure out what the future of hot rodding is. So Tesla Honda used to be a 1981 Honda Accord. Uh, now it's kind of a Frankenstein <laughs> conglomeration of a bunch of things. The trunk is where the motor and inverter live. So I still have the factory trunk release. Back here, this is actually the whole rear subframe out of a Tesla Model S. This is the inverter side, and then this is the motor side. So basically we're taking DC power from the batteries and then converting it into AC power for the AC induction motor. If I want to charge it, I just drop the charger in here and hook these up. It's kind of sketchy right now. Uh, but you know, it's a work in progress. It does really need something a wee bit better in technology to build this up into a passenger car. How fast will it go when you open it up? It uh, will cruise on level ground at 40 to 45 miles an hour. I think in the past, electric cars have been seen as some sort of eco-mobile that doesn't really have a lot of performance, and there's kind of a stigma associated with that. Hello, I'm an electric car. I can't go very fast or very far, and if you drive me, people will think you're gay. But for me, you know, I see this as how hot rodding was, you know, back in the 50s. The definition of hot rodding is taking something that's boring and lame and making it interesting and fast. In the 50s, you were trying to shove a huge engine into a small car and take components that weren't made to make as much power and make everything work. And there's the same thing happening now. But instead of using gasoline and wrenches and oil, it's software and laptops. Now that there's OEM electric cars like the Tesla, like the Chevy Volt, like the Nissan Leaf, there's opportunities to hot rod those things. As there's more sharing of knowledge with how to hack the software, how to crack the inverters, how to make all the different components work together, it's gonna really allow people to put electric motors into anything that they want. So to turn the car on, uh, you first turn on the 12 volt system to run all the computers. Turn on the dashboard. You can turn on the key. A lot of people ask me why I used Chevy Volt batteries instead of Tesla batteries. And the answer is power density. The Tesla batteries are great, but you need a lot of them to get a lot of amps. On a Tesla, it's the entire floor. You know, it's front to back loaded with batteries. And this car is tiny, you know, compared to a Tesla. A Tesla Model S is a huge, fat car. Even if I made everything as narrow as I possibly could, you know, the wheels would still stick out. After starting to run the math, I realized the car is going to have a ton of power. So I wanted to put the largest tires on here that I could fit uh, and still be kind of street legal. These are barely street legal. They're, they have a DOT stamp on there, but you don't want to drive them in the rain. The first step in the process of converting the car to electric was to gut it. So I had this gutted shell of a car up on the lift, jumped on the internet and started to see what I could fit. The issue though was there wasn't a lot of documentation on the internet for how big these batteries are. You know, how big is a Tesla Model S drive unit? You know, where are the mounting bolts and stuff? So then I just decided to order the parts and make it work when they got here. This is the battery system for Tesla Honda. I had to modify the cover. This is all fiberglass from the factory. It's like fiberglass infused plastic. But anyway, that goes on top of that. And then the whole thing goes underneath here. Ready? Yeah, do it. The box lit up. Well, this is on, but I didn't hear this big contact reflect. Me neither. Oh, we don't have the pack energized. That probably help. Yep. Ooh. When I first started the build, I had really no idea what to expect. I knew that I wanted it to be pretty fast, but this was my first try. So I thought, I'll start with good components. I'll start with you know a Tesla motor, 
as much batteries as I can fit, and we'll see where it goes. The very, very first time we rolled this thing out of the garage, it was insane. Beyond my wildest imagination for performance. Fuck me. <laughs> I've owned some very fast cars, and this blew them all out of the water. I just kind of did what I thought would work, and yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. It does zero to 60 in 2.43 seconds. It does the quarter mile in 10.5. I think that it'll do it in 9.8. Last time we went to the drag strip, we got kicked out because it went faster than I was certified to, to drive. So we'll have to go back and, and see what it really does. Tesla Honda can hang with just about anything on the road. Hellcats, Bugattis, Porsches, Ferraris, you name it. This little thing can, can hang. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that is freaking awesome. I work for Toyota, and this is so much better than any Prius we've ever put out. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to stay out of your way. Oh, no worries, man. <laughs> you guys have a good one. You too. Yeah, one of the biggest things that people say to me is, it doesn't sound like anything. It's got no soul. You gotta listen to a big block, you gotta listen to a V8, you gotta listen to whatever. And I was actually worried about that too at the beginning, is how can you have a performance vehicle but it doesn't have that sound? The performance is absolutely insane and makes up for it in every single way. When you step on it and you just hear the wind noise and you hear you know a little bit of gravel from the tires, I think it actually gives you a greater sense of speed than having a big roaring engine. So this thing being quiet, the only thing you focus on is the speed. My dad always worked on cars with me. He won't touch a car if it has a computer in it. You know, he's, he's a carburetor V8 guy. And I didn't want to be like that. I, I want to keep up with the times. I want to learn the new technology. My son is eight now, and I realized by the time that we start working on a car for him when he's 16, it might be electric. I figured if I can learn now how these electric cars are, are kind of put together, then maybe it'd be a good father-son project when it's time for him to have a car. I think people get scared that, oh, these electrics are coming, they're gonna take my gasoline, they're gonna take my V8. But it's, it's the same thing, it's just in a different format. <laughs> 